Of course, you can watch that tonight on Bally Sports Sun. And we're going to talk to Miami Heat analysts. You can hear on the radio calls with Jason Jackson and tonight in studio with Will Manso on Bally Sports Sun. 7 o'clock, they'll get their coverage going tonight. Amy Alderberg joining us here. First season uh, doing Heat games. She's been doing a fantastic job. So we'll talk some Heat basketball with Amy. Uh, Amy, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hey, Brendan. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's great to have you. We got the. It sounds like we don't know if it's official yet, but it sounds like we might be getting Duncan Robinson back tonight. It seems like it's getting better. How much would this help, Amy? They can't. I don't know what the hell's going on with the shooting this year. I, I don't yeah. know what's going. on. Holy smokes, no. dude! I've never it's seen. crazy because it's just like from first last year in the regular season to just struggling to find consistency, and it's so strange because I don't think they are totally uneasy with their shot profile. They get a lot of good shots. Uh, but, you know, one thing that's really encouraging is the last three games, so the Houston game, the Orlando game, and even um, what was the last game because they all just – Oh, Denver. Oh, uh, Denver, duh. They all started the game hitting threes in that first quarter, and it was kind of like, oh, this is what the team kind of thinks, like where they probably thought they would be. So um, I think having Duncan back, and whether he's back or not, and it's funny, we always joke, it kind of feels like the G League. I worked the G League for about two and a half seasons with the Raptors, and I loved it because I felt like it made me a lot better in that you show up and you never know who's actually playing. Um, you think you have a game plan or an idea of what the rotation or game plan might be, and it gets thrown out the window because someone's on a assignment or someone gets you know pulled up or whatever so um but to your point just having uh getting Duncan back whenever that happens it is whether he's gotten off to consistent three-point shooting he is not this season but uh it's about reps and it's about game reps so if this team can find a place where Duncan's like comfortable out there and hitting shots consistently of course they're going to be better he's the best three-point shooter in the history of this franchise and I think we forget that like we we've forgotten this we have forgotten that this year and I'm not, I like, and I understand why, right? But like, let's not forget the man has hit a lot of shots wearing a Miami jersey, and if, if he can get him back to that, uh, this team's gonna be okay. See, I don't, Amy, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that you looked at me like that. I don't. I don't Amy, like the, see, I don't, I don't I've like... always said one of the hardest things to do is to do something consistently where you fail in sixty percent of the time. Yeah, it yeah, wears right. on you, and and so everybody just says, "Oh, this guy's a bum. He can't make it. He's not shooting the ball well." And he's this. He's that. I'm like, dude, it is so hard to wrap around <laughs> being a failure 60% of the time. And it usually works out. Now, it hasn't for these guys in the last 10 months. That <laughs> they bring a, but, but I still have to sell the hope that this is going to turn around because it happens to shooters all the time. It just hasn't happened this long. I've never seen it happen this long. But these guys are good shooters. I don't know. Well, I think, like, what do you yeah, do? Because everybody weird. says, let's replace them. Let's trade them. Oh. And I'm like, you're not going to get good as shooters as these guys. You got to keep shooting it. Like I said, I think the last like week or so, at least in spurts, you're starting to see it a bit more. And the thing at the end of the day is shot making is contagious. Like, let's not forget when someone starts hitting, everyone starts feeling a little bit better. Um I really do believe, and I, I know we're sick of talking about this, but the way the season got started with just the injuries and two, two new starters and all that stuff, that does affect your shooting because your rhythm's different, because your rotation's different, your touches are different, you're playing with different guys. Of course, that's going to take time. Like, these aren't just stagnant shots. And by the way, it's the NBA. You're going up guys that are like 6'5 to 6'9 and long. Like, things aren't just – you don't just go out there and stand with your hands up. Like, your shots come from rhythm. And the thing about Duncan, I thought was just so, I thought he got off to a pretty good start this season in terms of uh, putting the ball on the deck. And then even his defense looked a little bit better. And that's because I think he was probably in the gym playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one to improve his defense this summer. But then when you're improving, your, when you're playing one-on-one -on -one and you're a shooter, you kind of figure out how to put the ball on the deck, right? So you kind of started seeing these like glimpses of a bit more other, other things that of course are going to help open a shot up more. So for, for me, obviously, like I always want to see players healthy. I think Duncan can be really important um, down the stretch here for Miami. So whether it's tonight or whether it's sometime soon, I, I will be happy when, when he's back out there. Amy, quick question. The, the last play of the game for, um, for Jimmy, where yeah. um, they threw it to him and he dunked it to win the game. Yeah. There can't be goaltending on that, correct? Mm, on an inbound pass. No, I, no. And, and actually, the thing is, if you remember a couple years ago, Jay Triano, who was the head coach of Phoenix at the time, drew up an inbound, pla pl drew up an inbound play 
And I know that because I went to the same high school as Jay Triano. He actually grew right. up the street from my parents. So like I, of course I was monitoring a little bit. He drew up the inbound play where it was a shot attempt from out of bounds. And like, it has to be done perfect, but it's legal because his team had it. I think it was, I don't remember exactly it was 0.3 or 0.4 seconds, but yeah, like it went, I, I think it went off the rim or it was a shot. No, the DeAndre rim. Ayton caught it, but it was yeah, over the cylinder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it was legal because it was just, so it, yeah, no, I think it was a brilliant play. Um, I, I still, this is the funny part about the whole thing. When that happened against, because I'm coming from the Raptors, Kyle Lowry in the bubble made a pass to OG Ananobi to extend the series against Boston. I don't know if y'all remember it. I think it was over Taco Fall. And he got it over his head across the court to the opposite side to OG, who had to literally like catch and shoot. It had to go right in his pocket. And it did. And I remember after the game the other night, I was saying, my gosh, you hear about how Gabe Vincent has really like picked Kyle's ear for so long and all this stuff and how he's been like a really good mentor to some of these younger guys. And it was the same thing. Like that pass over Jabari Smith, 6'11", had to, like, you're not even aiming for Jimmy. You're aiming for a spot and hoping he's there. You know what I mean? And I just thought yeah. um, for those two guys to have that moment was absolutely incredible. So, I mean, yes, while I understand this is a very passionate fan base, I'm learning that. And I, I think it's a positive problem when you expect to compete for a title every year or at least, you know, get up there. Uh, but this team is, it's, it, it's exciting, right? At least they're, they're figuring out ways to stay in games, which is fun. Every game is close. I'm curious, Amy, since you've been around, you know, you've seen Kyle with the Raptors and, and seeing, you know, what his couple his uh, his year here. What have been like your impressions with him and what he's, he's talked about, you know, having to feel out some stuff because, you know, Bam and Tyler are obviously growing a lot more than since the first year he's been here. He's obviously dealing with the knee thing, too. But just, I guess, watching him, is there something different that you've seen from him this year as opposed to other years? Like, what stands out to you about Kyle's season that's that's kind of been a bit of a up and down? Yeah, I think it's just been the consistency factor. Um, again, I always go back to, because I'm, I just started getting in with the Raptors when Kyle was kind of getting out with the Raptors, but I know that being around there and I'm hearing the same thing in terms of just, like, his leadership off the court. And last year with the Raptors, Fred Van Vliet, who's had to step into the role, but really spent a lot of time with Kyle in the first couple of weeks of the season. His numbers weren't great last year, and they ended up having a great season last year. But, And I remember specifically after a game, he said, I've been deferring for a couple of weeks, trying to get everybody else involved and like trying to get everybody touches and get every, because that's kind of your job as a point guard, right? And mm -hmm. I think that Kyle's always trying to do that, whether we realize it or not, he's always trying to get his teammates in, involved and healthy and, and find rhythms and all that fun stuff. And that has been a challenge this year. That's been, a, no one's been able to really find consistency in anything. And unfortunately for Kyle, like now he's not healthy again. So, um, but the one thing, and I, I feel like I continue to have these conversations um, here all the time. And I guess I'm a little bit biased in that I've seen it. I grew up watching Kyle Lowry. I know his, I, I know late game. Well, right now he's not even on the court late game. It's Gabe Vincent, but I just, I know he, he wants to win. And I do believe he's a really good teammate. Uh, Amy, the, the, the game's being so close. How <laughs> stressful do you think this is really? Cause like Spo, we, we hear him after the game and I love him. He's like, son, this is exciting. <laughs> this is money's worth. This has to be, this has to be though, exhausting for the entire team that, yeah, it's great that they're getting all these late game moments <laughs> to try and execute, but it's the margin is so small. So it's like you have a game like Houston where it's like, great, you won on a dunk and then you come back against Orlando, but then it's like you go against Denver and then you're right there again, but just the execution doesn't go quite right. So how do you how do you navigate that as as a team watching this team and everything being so close? Like, do you think this is going to burn them out at, at any point? Um, no. In that you know, some of these games you still don't have your regular rotation guys available, so I don't mm -hmm. know if it burns them out. If anything, I think what I think it was Bill Parcells. I used to have her in down. The like confidence is demonstrated ability. So I think that whether we see it or not, this team is kind of like yeah I've been here done this like this is what this is how we play and that has to mean something down the end especially when you get into tight games but to your point I said it's, I said that with Jax on, on the call I was like you know against Houston and especially against Orlando 
you, you saw a younger team. Like, they were playing against a team that, or especially in Orlando, really just took some bad shots when the game got tight. And, and Miami just continued to execute and got what they want. Now, obviously, when you're playing against Jokic, I don't care who else is available for Denver. You don't want to be in a tight game. You just don't. I mean, there's a reason the guys, in my opinion, it might might triple the MVP here in consecutive years. Um it's funny because, yes, like you keep your glass half full and you, and you listen to it. And I think it was Bam. He's saying, you know, we had him on the radio after the game, the Houston game, I think. I'll be, they all blend together, as I can tell. Um, and he was kind of like, yeah, I mean, in some ways, like it's we're getting experience in playing type games. And if we can gut them out, it's great. And then Jimmy's like, it's great that we win, but we're tired of being in this position, right? I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I always say you wake up and it doesn't matter if you're a coach, you're a player, whatever. You you're, you wake up every day and your goal is to go 1-0 that day. And that has to be like the focus. Just figure out how to win the game. And especially with the way this season's going in the Eastern Conference, wins have a very heavy weight and they're going to get heavier now in the last, uh, what, three weeks, four, two months? No, I don't even know, month and a half of the regular season. Um, but listen, like I... You, as long as you win the games, that's the most important thing. I, I, I hope that, and I do believe that it, it develops a certain confidence in being able to execute on both ends of the ball in tight situations and having that type of experience. Because you can't simulate that in practice, right? Like, you can't, right. you can't simulate that. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, 41 clutch games, leading the league. They're on pace to to set some NBA history, right? The Denver Nuggets played 41 games. I think it was the 77-78 season. Uh, three points or less decided by three points or less and Miami's at 31 right now so every time we sit there and we're mm. super stressed I'm like at least we're watching history you know we can say that yeah, <laughs> you know what <laughs> you should tell, yeah. tell Spo that one you can add it to yeah. his uh his greatest yeah. show on court because this is oh torture it's torture it's fun, like, it is fun. Yeah. I don't but I just it, imagine it it's got to be stressful on the team that's all it's it, oh, there's no course, easy but... ones so even if it's like once we know once we the 14 point lead comes I'm like yeah, but we know it's there's at some point this is going to be a four to six to four it, point game. Keep your glass half full. It doesn't matter if it's Houston or it's Denver. You're going to play right, it. Right. Like it's, right. as long as you can keep it close. But and I mean, to the other point, right? It's like I just don't think this team has been fully healthy long enough to like give themselves a real like shake at it, which is crazy because it's after tonight the All Star break. Right. So I think that's just the biggest component for these guys is just Isn't getting it? taking care of their bodies and see what they can do. Amy, it seems like the Heat are the only team in the East that haven't had that run. You know what yeah. I mean? That 10 yeah. out of 12 or that they'll win three, lose two, win four, lose two. They they haven't had that stretch where they go eight out of 10 or 10 out of 12. And I'm just waiting for that because then that's going to set them up for the postseason. Oh, yeah. Then they're like sitting in fourth or fourth right. right now. Exactly. You know? I mean, exactly. Absolutely. But I mean, even so you look at the, I actually have this written down. You look at the Denver game, the best team in the West. And I mean, they are. And by the way, we saw them without Jamal Murray and Aaron Gordon the other night. Right. Denver's really good. Everyone's talking about Phoenix is going to win this thing now. If Denver consistently plays like this, I I'd be surprised not to see them there. Um, Miami played them, lost by four. And there are three bench rotation guys, rookie Orlando Robinson, 10-day Jamari Bouye, and undrafted Haywood Highsmith. Right. Playing with the best team in the West, right. like playing them to the final possessions, that, ha like that has to be. And I know, like again, you look at wins and losses, and that's all that matters. But they're putting themselves in a position to win, and it's obviously the guys out there who's available – I think not having Victor Oladipo again has been been really tough for this team. I think he's such an important part of what they want to do, and especially in that second rotation. I think the staff is incredible because they put these guys in a position to win a basketball game every single night, regardless of who's available. So uh, to your point, if, if they can get their full arsenal, like you have to believe that they can stack up some wins. Amy, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. You guys can catch Amy tonight on Bally Sports Sun. As Heat and Nets get going, they start their coverage at 7 o'clock. You guys can hear preheat tonight as Amy's on the home games with Jason Jackson on the radio call. Preheat with Solana starts tonight at 6.15. Amy, so thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your week. I know I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. enjoy your break. Absolutely. <laughs>